a very good afternoon uh, all the participants uh, my name is uh, dr vignesh i am part of the national digital library of india team uh, on behalf of the pn panika foundation and the national digital library of india we are very happy to invite you for this uh, webinar on ndli in indian languages so this is uh, very crucial because uh, many of our uh, population as uh, or we are a di la linguistically diverse country and we have uh, officially 22 official languages and uh, there are so many dialects which are uh, innumerable dialects that are being uh, spoken and uh, indian language content though uh, they are available a lot in the print medium but uh, availability in the digital medium is still uh, a challenge so today we are having to have going to have this uh, webinar on uh, what are the type of uh, uh, content that are available uh, in Indian languages? Uh, so Dr. Plavan Kumar Bhomik, who is uh, one of my colleagues, uh, he's going to talk to you about on this very important topic. And uh, Dr. Plavan uh, is an assistant professor at the Center for Education Technology. And he's, uh, uh, his research interest uh, lies in the topic of uh, like artificial intelligence in education and uh, natural uh, natural language processing and uh, he's an expert in uh, uh, various designing educational technology solutions so uh, uh, we are happy to invite uh, dr plavan kumar Pomik for this uh, webinar uh, now i uh, invite balo Gopalji to uh, formally uh, uh, invite dr plavan before we begin the session So you have to unmute your mic. Visual. Pravin Kumar. Bhogika visual nahi aata hai. We can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I can hear you, but I cannot see the... Um, the, the face of Mr. Pravan Kumar. Okay, I'm, I'm really ah, sorry. Now it has come. <laughs> now it has come. Yes. Very How are you, sir? Uh, fine, thank you. Good afternoon, sir. I heard a lot of about you from Dr. Negresh. And one thing I'm also very much interested is you are focusing on developing indigenous products and indigenous uh, uh, focusing on the local languages and local uh, materials also. I want you to develop. Uh, you, you'll be developing it because uh, you are the uh, assistant professor of center for uh, center for education and technology so the center for education technology can do a lot of things because apart from that i want you to promote some of the rural products rural products that are very in a very much demand in other states and not other states other countries in fact i tell part of my experience in kerala uh, they're having jackfruit. Uh, jackfruit is freely available in Kerala. And as well as in also. And uh, one of my uh, classmates, good friend, uh, Dr. Vinod Thomas, uh, he was at the time, uh, I'm telling about uh, the story about uh, some 10 years back. He was at the time the World Bank Vice President at uh, New York. And uh, I gave him, when he came to, to Van Drum, I gave him some. Um, so, um, this what they call the uh, jackfruit chips 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 okay, okay. then uh, I, I gave him the jackfruit chips and he uh, he was he was telling you oh, uh, this is very sweet uh, very, very uh, good and the taste is also good shall i take it to home to uh, new york then i said i gave a packet a good packet of jackfruit then he went there after one week he telephoned me and he asked me to send some 50 tons of 50 tons of uh, jackfruit uh, this jackfruit uh, chips i was wondering see uh, here it is thrown to uh, animals and in the, um, um, the fields also but this is a value added product not only the all parts of the uh, jackfruit is converted into value added product this local through this uh, education technology you must give emphasis to market and produce, uh, produce not market produce uh, produce the local 
uh, food and food and uh, eating items because these have a lot of market potential in other state and it's an exportable item and that will give you uh, give us some in, in, uh, incentives also so when you are focusing on uh, this uh, regional uh, languages uh, indigenous products i welcome you are uh, that's why i was very, very uh, particular i discussed with uh, dr begresh uh, because then I, I that's why i had some other program today but even then i said i will hear mr uh, uh, plavan kumar and i want to implement it in kerala first in kerala uh, it's a pressure and privilege for me to invite you to this webinar and we need your further uh, involvement and collaboration to make this uh, digital uh, this peer uh, particular foundations uh, innovative concept of going to the masses not innovative going to the masses and making make them uh, skilled so that they can uh, they can earn that's our philosophy earn while you they learn in schools earn while you learn as well as uh, gandhian philosophy of every home a production center that is why china has developed that concept so with your uh, knowledge and your experience uh, we are delighted to hear your uh, uh, lecture and i am welcoming you again and welcoming uh, dr vigresh and all other all participants uh, attending this webinar thank you mr prabhan uh, kumar ji uh, you can uh, start your uh, webinar webinar uh, thank you very much, uh, respected Sir Sri Balavopal Ji, Dr. Vignesh, and it is really a pleasure and privilege for me uh, to speak in such a uh, in such an important occasion, and that occasion is named after uh, a very eminent person like P. M. Panikkar. So I am very much privileged to be a speaker in the 25th P. M. P. N. Panikkar National Reading Digital. Uh, uh, reading month uh, celebration 2020. Uh, so as I have been interested uh, to talk with uh, talk about NDLI in natural Indian languages. Uh, so uh, uh, as you know that uh, this uh, we are developing uh, like India, which is uh, uh, which has a uh, Uh, sorry, I got disconnected in between. So, am I audible now? Hello. Y yes, sir. You are. You are. There is okay, some uh, can, can, can I share my screen? Have you yes, given yes. me? Okay. Yes. So let have. me share my screen. So, as I was talking about, uh, so the diversity of language is a very important aspect. While someone is developing a product or developing a system or developing any policy uh, in the Indian context, uh, and because of the very fact that we are uh, pretty much a very linguistically diverse uh, um, nation. So before going to the main topic, primary topic, let me start with a story of a kid. I, I guess there are uh, many students who are uh, participating in this webinar. Uh, I, I think I have been informed by Dr. Vignes about uh, that particular statistics. So with that assumption, uh, my uh, deliberation will be involving many such stories before going to the actual uh, uh, point of today's discussion. So let me start with a story of a kid. Maybe the kid is myself, uh, but it can be generalized uh, to any kid who is uh, hailing from a very remote uh, corner of India, from a very remote village, where maybe the electric electricity has not yet reached. And in when I was a kid, that was a, a kind of very uh, uh, frequent or very normal situation in a rural area. Now the kid has a very, uh, uh, it is uh, is very fond of reading Parneka Bhat's Shock Thauska. And he's uh, very fond of thinking about things. He was very fond about imagine, imagining various things, right? Now, luckily, there was a library, though 
that was called a library, but that was a kind of 11 by 12, uh, a very small room and stuffed with almirahs full of books. Now, luckily, the, the, the kid uh, has got a membership somehow in that library. And in the library, there was a person called Anil Uncle. In Bengali, we call Uncle as Kaku. So Anil Kaku was the person who used to manage the library, but he was not a paid person. So he was not getting salaried from the library. He, he was doing as a, a voluntary uh, uh, task or maybe community service task. Uh, and he was managing the library. Now, Anil Kaku had got all the answers to my questions. So I, I can remember that uh, if you are appearing for a 10 standard history exam, and in the history essays, you if you can put uh, English quotation. So I uh, studied in Bengali medium. So writing English, in, uh, English quotations in history essays is thought to be very prized uh, position. So these uh, quotations in English, they are like jewels in this uh, essays. Now, whenever I got to find one such quotation, I just went to uh, Anil Kaku or Anil Uncle and asked him, Anil Uncle, I was writing an essay about this. And in this particular context, I need a quotation. Can you please provide me with some or maybe at least one? Anil Kaku will think for a few minutes and go to the particular rack, grab a book, open the page, and present the quotation to me. See, here you are. So I'm talking about a library like this, where the library can cater to the need of the learner at the very granular level, right? Now, that is a kid that is belonging to a village that is in Bengal. Now think about such several kids in different parts of India, one from, from Kerala, one from Rajasthan, one from Madhya Pradesh, one from Karnataka, one from Bengal, one from Northeast, may, any corner you can think of. Now they're asking similar questions in their own language. They want their uh, content in their own languages, right? Now you see the propensity of the problem, the uh, the magnitude of the problem, how huge the problem is. And whenever there is a problem, there lies huge, huge, huge challenges. And I am proud to say that National Digital Library of India has tried to address such a big problem, catering to the individual need of all the learners in India with their own, in their own vernacular or own local languages. So dear participants, friends, let me present you the National Digital Library of India in Indian languages, right? So again, I will tell you a story. So this is a painting. Uh, I hope many of you can uh, recognize what this painting is about. But for those who uh, do not have any idea of uh, what this painting is, this painting is a very interesting one. This is called a Tower of Babel, right? And this is very much related to the language in which the human beings speak and communicate with each other, right? And so, this uh, so Tower sorry of Babel, to, yeah. Sorry to intervene. Your presentation is not visible. Okay. So, sorry yeah. about that. I, I'll just share. I forgot to share it. Sorry. Is it visible now? Yes, it's visible now. Okay, so can you see the Tower of Babel painting? Yes, we, we can see. Okay, so this is a painting by uh, Martin Van uh, Valken Walk, uh, uh, and this is sourced from Google Art and Culture, which is a very important, uh, very interesting application you can uh, browse through this application. But again, this Tower of Babel is uh, a mythical uh, uh, entity. So this uh, belong to uh, the book of Genesis, where the story of creation is uh, 
uh, written in, in, in a biblical uh, way. So the story goes like this. So before the um, great flood, the human being, they used to talk in a single language, the entire human being or human race in the whole world, they talked in one unified language, one single language. Now, after the flood, they used to talk, uh, talk in the same language, they used to communicate in the same language. Now, they tried to move eastward, right? Now, while they were uh, moving eastward, uh, in the Mount of Sinar, they uh, thought that they would build a very long, huge tower so that they can reach the um, heaven, right? So this is a very astounding and very uh, um, brave task to do, right? Reach the heaven. Now the God did, did not like that idea. So mortal human being, they are trying to reach heaven, no way. So he conspired. But again, the human race, the human being, they are God's children. They cannot, uh, the God cannot really punish them in a very harsh way. They cannot, God cannot kill them, right? So what he did, he confounded the speech of the individual human being. Now confounding the speech, what that will uh, serve? What purpose that will serve? Now, they'll be having different way to speak the things. And as they will be having different ways to speak the thing, they might not be able to communicate with each other. Now, if they are not able to communicate with each other, they will not be able to build a tower as huge like this. So that was the motivation. And that perhaps, according to the biblical uh, story of uh, creation or explanation of creation, the birth of different multiple languages. So, okay, this is a story. We know all this is a story, mythical story. The diversity of language has got different factors, right? Migration, etc. So there are uh, many different factors. But the reality is we speak different languages, right? Worldwide. Now, coming to the Indian context, so I, I really will not lose the opportunity to quote a very famous poet, uh, singer, and composer, Atul Prashad Sen, who wrote many patriotic songs. So I, this is an excerpt of one of the patriotic songs. So I'll just uh, 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 quote the song in Bengali first, then I'll translate that in English. Nana bhasha nana mot nana puridhan bibidhir maje dekho milono mohan. Vary the tongues and varies each race. Amid each a unity, what great grace. So you can see that in these four lines, we are really having the essence of the nation India, what we call uh, nation of India. We have got multiple languages. We uh, put on different dresses. We have got different cultures, but within this diversity, we have a very graceful unity. So this is our India. This is my India. And this is the India of every Indians, right? So we live in diversity, but we are united in some way. So as we are living in diversity in different aspects, in cultural aspect, in linguistic aspect, as I was saying earlier, that we have to always think about the designs that includes everyone, includes every linguistic community, includes every cultural community, and includes every uh, user uh, from different perspectives, right? And I guess this uh, puts today's talk in very much into the context. And th today, as uh, I'm going to talk about National Digital Library of India and uh, how it is uh, um, supporting different Indian language content, access to the different language, uh, Indian language contents. 
and that can be summarized with this single slogan one library all of india as we are designing a library for india the library should take care of the needs the information or the knowledge need of the entire community from diverse linguistic background so to give you a quick summary of uh, uh, different uh, numbers that will tell something about or one aspect about the library it is having around or hosting around 4.8 crore content uh, on about 300 plus languages and these contents have been harvested from around 200 sources and it is boasting to have registered around 48 lakh users and many of them are very active users so today's uh, topic is ndli in indian languages but before moving to this uh, topic let me give you a very uh, uh, very brief glimpse of uh, what ndli is what the what is the vision of ndli maybe uh, many of you have participated in uh, the sessions uh, um, uh, by professor pp das and professor pp chakraborty uh, you might find some few slides to be uh, similar but for the others who have joined uh, uh, newly for them i just uh, uh, try to put the things uh, into the uh, into proper context so what is the vision of ndli the vision of ndli is to build a national uh, digital library of india as a national knowledge and cultural asset and that would be a key driving force for education research cultural heritage innovation and knowledge sharing in india so this is the uh, grand vision with which ndli project has been started and it started uh, in the year of 2015 and uh, with the mission that it should be able to create a 24 plus 7 enabled integrated ubiquitous digital knowledge source and it will be able to protect and preserve indian cultural academic and scientific heritage so this is a kind of mission uh, the ndli has and basically uh, it is to say that it is uh, mm, it should support its own cultural spiritual academic and scientific heritage in its own terms now this particular phrase in its on its own term has got many uh, meaning because it is a somehow overloaded term but it has got many aspects one of the aspect is in its own language now we have got many languages and officially we have got 20 we have got 22 official languages but there are many other languages in which different communities uh, in india talk in or communicate in so we need to consider other languages as well so the motto of ndli is open and inclusive so we promote open culture open design open content and we promote inclusiveness including every community including every language in its fold so as dr vignes was talking about uh, uh, before starting the session that we have got different uh, versions of the application it has got the web version which you can find in www.ndl.gov.in and uh, as a mobile app you can find it in google play store as well as in uh, uh, android uh, sorry uh, uh, apple ios so th uh, there are unique certain unique features of ndli so it is a single window multilingual search and access platform uh, you don't need to visit multiple websites to find your uh, required information there is a single platform which will which will provide you uh, different types of contents uh, served from different sources and for different purposes or in different modalities uh, so it covers entire spectrum of learners from primary to uh, research level and for lifelong learners as well in hosts, hosts different uh, uh, types of uh, content media uh, and it supports some form of personal, personalization 
and it democratizes education by providing support for national level license. So there are many resources that have been procured, license for those have been procured through uh, the government of India and that have, are being disseminated by National Digital Library of India. And it has got a wide range of contents, uh, starting from the school school domain, open contributions, research and uh, professional institutions. For example, there are lecture notes, video lectures, uh, assignments, lab experiments, the different questions, ba question banks for preparing uh, for different competitive exams. There are model answers in the um, uh, individual contribution or in open contribution domain, there are many data sets, manuscripts, audio video content. So the expense of or the range of contents is really huge and uh, the spectrum is really wide. And this, as we, we are talking uh, about this from the very beginning that this platform is for all the learners from the school goers, for the school goers, the college, goers for uh, working professionals, the researchers, entrepreneurs, and finally the lifelong learn learners. So every uh, learner or every level of level of user has got some uh, information uh, for his or her own need. And the whole design is centered around uh, something is called uh, something that is called metadata. So this metadata is really a description of the resources which helps the system to efficiently search and discover the resources that are being hosted in NDLI. Now, this point I like to highlight that uh, NDL does not store all, all the content. So mostly the contents are hosted in their respective sources, but NDLI is uh, integrating them by uh, including their metadata in the central NDL repository. Now, as we are growing, as NDLI is growing, NDLI, NDLI wants to grow with the users, the users that are connecting with NDLI. So it's very important to strengthen the engagement with the users. That's why with this motto, the NDLI club was set up. And I guess the mission that NDLI is having that is uh, aligned with the Read, Read India mission, which is being preached by PN uh, Panikar Foundation for long with the motto learn and grow. I think NDL sh shares the same philosophy uh, of learn and grow. Now, when I talk about NDLI in Indian languages, there are three aspects. One is the interfaces by which different parts of uh, NDLI repository can be navigated. Those who have registered, they know what the interfaces are. And the second important aspect is the search. Can we search in multiple languages? The third important aspect is the content. Do we have contents in different languages? So these are the three questions we have asked while we started designing NDLI system. Whether we have got interfaces for all the languages or the major languages, whether we have got search system for all the languages, whether we have got contents for different languages, right? So I think my uh, um, deliberation will be focusing on three, these three aspects of uh, um, NDLI, focusing specifically on Indian languages. So coming to the interfaces. So the interfaces, as you will start browsing uh, or accessing NDLI, there are primarily three generic interfaces. One is browse interface, the second is search interface, and finally the content access interface, right? Now the language of the interface, interfaces are available in uh, 10 Indian languages apart from English. So in total we have support for, the NDLA has got support for 11 languages 
one being English and other being uh, other uh, different Indian languages. So this particular interface is being shown in uh, Malayalam language where we are trying to browse by type. So there are different content types like text content, video content, audio, audio content, uh, presentation, simulation. So here exactly what we are doing. We're trying to browse the contents that are available uh, in uh, browse the uh, video content in Malayalam language, right? So what we have done, we have, uh, so there is a language selection tab out here. If you click on this, the different language options will be coming and the selected for the selected language, the interfaces will be uh, visible, right? Now, you can do different types of browse. For that, you need to click on this part. So there uh, you can select browse by type. I really don't know what uh, will be the representation of browse by type in Malayalam. Uh, so if you click on that, this interface will so show different types. Now I have clicked on the video and you can see that we have got the Malayalam representation of the English string video. Now you can see that have got different contents. Uh, but one interesting thing that we can observe that though we have got a description of the uh, content in uh, Malayalam, but the content title is written in English, right? Now, if you dig in further, go to the particular video, you'll see that the particular video is rendered in Malayalam language. Right, though the content title is in English, you can retrieve or you can see the contents that are rendered in uh, the specific language. And you can see that there, there are different filter options, which are again in Malayalam. Similarly, you can uh, browse by subject. Here I'm presenting you an interface in, in Hindi, uh, which is doing browse by subject. Now this browse by subject can be done in, an hierarch in a hierarchical manner, right? So there is a first level uh, hierarchy, uh, first level subject like uh, Prakritik Vigyan or, or Ganit, uh, that is nat natural science and mathematics. Now, if you click on this, you can see that the results are coming here. You have Hindi results, and of course you'll be having English re results as well. Uh, and now you can, if you select on Hindi, it will show you all the Hindi contents, right? Similarly, you can select the second uh, level based on the selection in the first level. And based on the selection of the first level and the second level, you can select the, th the third level, right? Now, this interface is an example of a browse by learning resource type in ODR language, right? Now again, uh, what I have done, I have done browse by learning resource type. So if you click uh, at this part, you, you will see different options. One of the options would be browse by learning resource type. If you do that, you will see different uh, learning resource types. And there are several learning resource types, but there are uh, the important learning resource types. For important learning resource types, you have got certain uh, quick access buttons. So here you have a quick access button for a uh, book. Now, if you click on this, you'll get uh, uh, all the books that are there in NDLI. Now you can filter that in further. Let's say you want to have the books only in ODIA. So for that, you need to go to uh, the filter option Vasha or language. Then you can select ODIA as your language, and then you'll get all the contents that are uh, uh, written in ODIA language. So this is another interface which is, uh, I think one of the most important interfaces in India is the search interface. And this search interface is being rendered in Bangla. You can see that all the elements in this uh, interface, they are rendered in Bengali or Bangla, right? Though I have uh, put the search query in English, right? You can see that the search query mathematics is in English. Though it is in math, uh, English query, you can see that it can present the results uh, that are in Bengali language as well, right? So for example, all these contents you can see, those uh, who can read Bengali, 
they are in Bengali and they are talking about mathematics, right? So, for example, this particular beautiful uh, picture, uh, pictured item uh, is about uh, fantastic Fibonacci, right? And that uh, the Bengali translation of that is uh, Apurbo Fibonacci, right? So you can see that though we have put uh, the search query in English, you can retrieve the resources or get the resources that are in different other language, languages like Vojpuri, uh, um, Bodo, Bangla, different other languages, right? So more or less, this is in very brief uh, how we go about interfaces in different Indian languages. Uh, and I uh, really um, will uh, request you to uh, browse or access NDLI to get to know what are the other interesting features uh, that are there in NDLI as far as the interfaces in Indian languages uh, are concerned. Right. Now coming to the next part of uh, uh, the design is the whether we can search in different other languages than English. So currently, NDLI supports uh, uh, search in two other languages than English, and these are the languages are Hindi and Bengali. Uh, I know this. Uh, this is a very small list compared to the number of languages we have in India, but uh, we are already working on the design. Maybe that will be rolled out uh, uh, after a few months. Uh, that will accommodate search in other uh, Indian languages, right? We are really uh, working uh, uh, on it. Now, here you can see that we have searched in Hindi and the search string is Mahatma Gandhi, right? And you can see that we have uh, uh, all the results that are talking about, uh, that concerns Mahatma Gandhi, right? Uh, likewise, you can uh, search in, uh, and here we, we, we have searched again uh, with another string Hindi, uh, that is Shahitya. Now you can see that though we have searched in Hindi, we have retrieved contents that are written in English. For example, Compet Comparative Literature Paper 3, National Eligibility Test Examination Question Paper, June 2010. So you can see that we can search cross language way. So we are putting the query in Hindi, we are retrieving the results in Hindi, you can see here, as well as we are retrieving the relevant results in English as well, right? And then you can also filter with other uh, languages. So here is an example of a search in Bangla. Now here we are trying to search the uh, poems of Rabindranath Thakur, Rabindranath Tagore. You can see that all the resources that are being listed here, they are the poems of, beautiful poems of Rabindranath Tagore, right? All in Bengali. Now coming to the content. We have got contents in many Indian languages. So these are some examples, but that, that doesn't mean that the other language, uh, languages are excluded. So this is uh, a content uh, in Malayalam. And another interesting thing you can see, I think this is a book uh, uh, in uh, Malayalam language. And this book has got, I think one, two, three, four, five chapters or five parts. All these parts are being listed here, right? So one can move to the other chapter, maybe this uh, individual parts are the chapters of the book. So you can click this part and go to that particular chapter. So you can move uh, across the chapters and uh, you don't need to go uh, and search back again. In the same interface, we'll be getting all the related contents together, right? All the related chapters, all the chapters of the same book maybe or all the um, other video lecture of, uh, lectures of the same uh, course. So this is a very important feature in uh, National Digital Library of India as far as the content uh, page is involved. So this is our content in uh, Gujarati. 
again you can see that uh, perhaps this is a book and uh, all the chapters are listed and you can move across the chapters uh, to see the different chapters of the same book in the same content interface and this is a, an example of uh, content in sanskrit and content in bengali i think this is a, a content about uh, Ravindranath being in Shillong. So Shillong was a very important uh, place uh, where Ravindranath used to visit frequently. Uh, and uh, I think this content is from Presidency Alumni Association, Calcutta. So they have very interesting resources like uh, the um, writings of uh, Jagadish Chandra, Acharya, Acharya Jagadish Chandra Bose. So there are very eminent uh, writings or uh, communication by different eminent uh, researchers, luminaries, and their resources are being hosted in Presidency Alumni Association, Calcutta. And being in Calcutta, they have many resources that are in uh, English as well as in Bengali. So if we look at the language-wise distribution, uh, I will not say we are doing really good. So uh, I, I, have, I have excluded English, right? English contents, uh, they, they are being used very frequently. There is no escape from that. But uh, if we exclude English, so this is the distribution of the resources across different Indian languages, right? And you can see that Bangla has got around 49% of the chunk. Uh, and this is no way uh, that uh, this is uh, the reason that the NDLI is hosted at IIT Kharagpur. But this is, uh, this is a fact that uh, uh, there are several resources like West Bengal Public Library Network or different other uh, huge collections from which we can borrow the resources or integrate the resources. Perhaps that is the reason that Bangla has got the greater chunk, but that is not the intention really. So we need to have a uniform distribution of the resources in NDLI. So that is what we are up to. We are taking that very seriously that we need to have a very uniform uh, distribution of the collection, the contents in different languages, right? So this pie chart should look, every language has got the same proportion. So with this, let me talk about uh, several future initiatives. Uh, uh, the interfaces, they should be available in all other Indian languages, and we are really working hard uh, on this point. Search should be available in other languages. As I have mentioned, we have already started working on the uh, technology part of it, and some of which we have already developed. Uh, and we are trying to roll out this uh, feature as soon as possible. And this is very important, uh, which uh, I think we, we need the help of the different language communities because uh, they know uh, what are the important contents or quality contents that are uh, existing in their language community. So uh, we need to ensure that uh, there is an uh, there is a uniformity in the content distribution. But uh, unless we have the help from different uh, linguistic community, it will not be possible for us to ensure this uniformity. So uh, this is I'm preaching to you that we need to go hand hand in hand and collaborate with you uh, to uh, find out resources, important resources that are there in other languages and will be very much happy to integrate those in NDLI. And uh, while you're talking about enhancing uh, or increasing the spread or increasing the number of languages uh, in the interface domain, that is going to have the interfaces available in all the languages, we really need your support. So what we need really you can see that if you have browsed uh, the NDLA interfaces, there are different UI or user interface elements, right? So these individual user interface elements, they have to be translated uh, into the corresponding uh, language, right? So if uh, let's say we are trying to 
uh, uh, create uh, an interface for Malayalam, though Malayalam is included in NDLI. Now, for every user uh, interface element, every string that you can see over the buttons or different places in uh, the NDLI interfaces, that those have to be translated. And I think uh, the local, uh, the, the, the speakers of that language, they are the best persons to do that. So we really need your support uh, to develop the language, the interfaces of different languages. And while we are talking about language specific contents, we need or we are requesting different organi organizations, different libraries, different uh, schools, uh, different administrative offices to come forward with uh, uh, the contents in the local languages. And again, we'll be happy to integrate those uh, with NDLI. So we are, uh, we are really requesting for the organization level uh, contents in local language, and as well as the individual uh, contributions uh, of the contents from the local language. So as far as I was talking about, we are working on uh, the technical designs of uh, uh, making this content searchable in uh, other languages. So this is a video that will illustrate how uh, the artificial intelligence technique is being used to search uh, the scanned books. So the, there are many books that are scanned in different languages. And uh, it is very uh, hard to search within these scanned books because they are in uh, image form. So if they're in image form, the text processing systems, they are uh, really, uh, they, they really find it hard to search the content, right? So what this initiative has um, done, and this is, has been done in collaboration with uh, CBIT, IIIT Hyderabad, led by Professor C.V. Johor, uh, so they have developed uh, uh, an information retrieval system so that uh, in sim simpler word, you have got the books in different languages and you can write the queries in different languages and it can uh, uh, retrieve the resources that are matching the query, right? And uh, they are using a technique called uh, the optical character recognition technique uh, along with the search technologies, right? So th this is a very beautifully executed project. I'll not uh, be, okay, I'm just keeping a part of it. Yeah. So I'll uh, skip this part because uh, I have uh, shown you the part which established, uh, uh, estab somehow established my point that uh, um, though the contents are in different languages and they are in scanned form, uh, they can uh, uh, match the query that is written in the query box and retrieve the specific part of the content which has got match uh, to the query. So uh, 
to develop a fully functional and uh, inclusive of all the languages of India, we really require your support. So do please help us by in various ways. So one is translating quali quality contents in your language. There are many useful contents or quality contents that are available in different other languages. For example, in English, maybe in other languages, but may not be, may, it may be the fact that that particular content is not uh, um, available in a particular language. So that particular lang linguistic community can come forward and help us by providing a translation of that uh, quality content so that uh, particular content will be accessible by that particular uh, community. The second uh, help that we require from the community is to recommend to us a list of quality contents in the local language. So that's how we can harvest the content in a crowdsourced manner. So it is the community they are coming forward with the contents in the local language. And again, we'll be very much uh, happy to have them in NDLI to provide access to them to the wider community. And third one is contributing original teaching learning material. So in schools, the teachers, they are really uh, providing huge amount of effort to curate, create very good, interesting quality teaching learning materials. So if they're available and in local language, if they're available to us in the NDLI, so it will be very much beneficial to the other uh, teachers, maybe in the same language. So with this motto, uh, this particular NDLI uh, concept of NDLI club was set up. So apart from the reading, uh, to, to create the habit of reading, to inculcate the habit of reading, we are also requesting for community support through these NDLI clubs so that the NDLI, uh, whole NDLI repository can be enriched with more and more Indian language contents, Indian language interfaces. So this, this is a, a request to all the different language communities to come forward and contribute to the Nat National Digital Library of India with their own uh, linguistic artifacts, contents, and other things. So I think uh, Dr. Vignesh is uh, uh, conducting different workshops, uh, mm, very interesting workshops on diff and competitions uh, on different aspects of reading. Maybe this, uh, uh, this task of translation, this task of recommendation, this task of contrib contribution can be uh, bring into the, brought into the fold of uh, NDLI club and maybe different hackathons or competitions can be arranged or organized to harvest contents from the community in a very natural way. So I think uh, in the beginning, uh, Dr. Vignesh has played this video, but uh, I'll play it again because that really uh, uh, gives us the essence of the multilinguality of the library, the National Digital Library of India. So let me play it again. So the audio is not coming. Sir, that audio audio is not coming, sir. You may have to unmute your mic. That only I think it will be 
or when you share you have to click on the share the sound also option at the bottom So thank you very much. So this, I think this is the end of my deliberation. And if time permits, I'll be happy to uh, address your questions. Uh, though I cannot see you, uh, it's a very uh, different kind of situation, but I, I will definitely listen to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this uh, new dimension to NDLA which specifically talks about uh, accessing uh, India in Indian uh, languages. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions already from the participants. I have noted down some of them. So there is a question from uh, Aruna Kumar uh, Gadapalli. Uh, question is, if a child wants to write stories in mother tongue and if he or she wants to contribute to NDLA, can that be done? Or do one need to publish before contributing to NDLA? Okay, so that is a. So can, can I uh, respond to this question? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. So, so that you, is a, before you move the, if you could uh, stop sharing your screen, then you will okay. be able to see your face. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Fine, sir. Kindly go so, ahead. So th this is a very very interesting suggestion, or actually we are uh, thinking over this for a long, and we are uh, designing systems or interfaces to receive uh, the creation from the community. So I, I maybe uh, rephrase the thing uh, or maybe put the thing in the phrase, the entire uh, wish in a phrase, uh, the creation of the community. So we are, uh, we have started already uh, the concept of the um, NDLI club, uh, though that is in a very physical form. Very soon we are tr we are going to have an online version of the NDLI club, which will host different uh, activities. For example, one of the important activities would be different act di different uh, tasks or different competitions uh, will be organized in different levels. It can be in national level, it can be in uh, state level, it can be in local level, or it can be even in institution level. Right. So one can uh, think of a system like this, where a kid who is very talented, and all kids are very talented in my view, and they have their own way of imagining the things. So have, they have their own creations, and these creations will be part of the NDLI club without any hindrance. Sure. But in order to take that forward to the uh, uh, core NDLI platform. So this NDLI has has now is being uh, 
thought of as uh, a core part, core system, which is the NDLI repository. And the, in the periphery of that would be a, a, a layer, which we call as NDLI club, which will be interfacing with the community, which will be the interface of uh, the NDLI core with the community. Now, whatever the community is producing will be a part of the NDLI club without any, uh, uh, so there will be some checks and balances, of course. And the other communities, they will be able to view or uh, do several things uh, on it. And depending on what kind of rights someone uh, is attributing to the content that has been created by the person. Now, after that, there will be a central community, which again, that uh, committee, again, that would be driven by the community. They will be looking, reviewing the contents that are being uh, contributed to the NDLI club. And quality contents will be pushed to NDLI core. So that is how we are designing uh, the entire service spectrum or services. So definitely, yes, the contribution from the community, be it a kid, be, it, be, be uh, the person is a kid, be a person is a teacher, anyone can contribute to NDLI and that would be uh, translated or transformed, tran transferred to the core with a proper checks, checks and balances. I hope I have answered your question. Yes. Uh, so similar question. So this question is from uh, a vice principal. Uh, his question is, I'm an economics teacher and uh, want to create my content planning. Will NDLI support me for this? Uh, Dr. Vignesh, I uh, lost few words in between. Can you repeat the question? Sure, 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 sure. So uh, this question is from uh, a vice principal and uh, his or uh, her question is, uh, I want to ask you that I am an economics teacher and I want okay. to create uh, my content in Rajasthani. Will NDLI yes. support me for this? Okay, definitely. Actually, uh, uh, one week back, we had uh, a very interesting, very useful or very fruitful meeting with uh, uh, a number of principals or uh, educationists uh, from different uh, parts of India. So this particular point was very much appreciated that uh, the teaching community, they want to participate in this movement. They want to contribute the contents in their uh, local language. We are very much uh, uh, supportive of this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this activity because this will not only enrich the um, schools, but also it will enrich the NDLI and in turn it will enrich the entire nation. And uh, we are working on uh, the, uh, the development of the platform that will support these contributions. Definitely, we, we'll get back to you, ma'am, or sir, uh, in due course. Definitely, it can be done. Okay. So, uh, I think one more similar question. And this question is from Pranchali. I am a, lab a librarian as well as a writer. So, how to contribute my writing on this platform? So this, I think the answer would be same. Uh, uh, everything, so le let me uh, try to generalize the design a uh, bit further. So we have got different layers, right? At the core, at the kernel, there sits NDLI repository, right? And on top of that, you have got the club layer and on top of that, you have got the inter-community. And we are trying to provide interfaces through this cloud platform so that any person can contribute to NDLI. I think this will uh, summarize the stand that NDLI is trying to uh, take to include or to uh, uh, collect the contents from the community or engage with the community. I'll, I'll rephrase it, engage with the community. So this is the 
primary mandate at this point of time that the engagement with the community should be very much prominent. It is not only that the NDLI would be, it will not be a one-way process, it will be a both-way process. There will be both-way contribution as NDLI would, would be contributing to the nation and the nation would be contributing to the repository so that there will be a snowball effect and everyone will get enriched. Sure. So there is a, a suggestion from Mr. Venkat uh, Gonaretti. Uh, there is one library exclusively meant for stories established by famous writer uh, Kalipatnam Ramarao in Srikakulam, Andhra Pradesh. Can this be linked to NDLI so that uh, researchers uh, can, be, uh, can get benefited? Definitely. So uh, th this, this was one of the other points in my uh, wish list uh, that uh, can you uh, give us the pointers of useful resources? Definitely, sir. If you can provide us with the link, we can, we can connect with the organization if, if required and uh, get the contents connected or integrated to NDLI system. Definitely. Very useful suggestion. And I'll request the other participants to come forward with uh, um, the pointers to the other resources in different languages. That's how the entire system will be enriched. Sure. So uh, thank you so much, sir. Thanks for the uh, wonderful uh, session. So now I request uh, Balakopalji uh, to uh, take it forward. Balakopalji. Yes, uh, Prabhan Kumar, Kumarji, it was your uh, amazing uh, talk, very good. But I have a suggestion, small suggestion that can be decided, discussed with your uh, many officials also. Because now in this, in this era, uh, we want some money in our hands. So, uh, uh, regional products, that is indigenous products has to be developed. For example, in Bengali, the Bengali silk saris has very good demand. That has to be uh, taken to other parts, Orissa. Uh, and then in uh, Calcutta, uh, in UP Uttar Pradesh, there's chicken uh, varieties of saris, etc. Or in Kerala, the Kaso saris, Kaso saris, it has got demand in different parts of the country. You now through this uh, digital library, because we are planning to go to the, have these digital libraries in all panchayats of the country. That's our dream. Not dream, it will be a reality by 2025. Uh, so during that period, we had to educate because you are in, involved in education technology. The education has to be linked with uh, some technology towers, technology also, some appropriate technology or intermediate technology by which uh, we can, because everybody wants to uh, make our citizen more effective and more uh, powerful because through in, in knowledge. So that type of uh, ideas should also be conceived and, and uh, implemented through your division, uh, Center for Education Technology. Definitely, sir. This is a very useful suggestion. Uh, I, and I agree with you that uh, we need to support uh, the uh, training and education uh, that will enhance uh, the capability or skill to uh, promote these indigenous products. And, and I, I really... Uh, uh, appreciate your suggestion and I think I, I will discuss with uh, the entire team and th that is a very very important suggestion. Thank, thank you sir. Thank you very much. And thank you Mr. Prabhan Kumarji for coming up to attending this webinar and giving us some some thoughts uh, how to develop, how to have association with the NDLI, local people NDLI for their uh, what you called for their uh, knowledge empowerment. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Prabhup Kumar again, and Dr. Vignesh and the entire uh, delegates. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, I, I, and again, I'm uh, pretty uh, uncomfortable not to see the participants. So uh, <laughs> it's really sad I could not see you all, uh, but uh, I guess we'll uh, be in touch through NDLI, because you are all part of NDLI. You are NDLI. So it's a community effort. It is not an effort from the individual institution. So we are all 
part of NDLI. We are all contributing to the NDLI, and I look forward to more contribution from the uh, all stakeholders. Thank you very much, and hopefully we'll be connected again. And I, I really thank Dr. Vignes as well for giving me opportunity to talk here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sir, uh, people are asking for your uh, contact details. Can you share uh, email ID? I think that is uh, with you. You can share that with. Okay. Sure, sure. So I will uh, share it with them, and also the presentation we can upload it on the project website, right? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure. So participants, uh, the presentation for today's uh, webinar will be uploaded uh, in the project. Uh, so I'm just going to the URL in the chat box. So kindly, uh, uh, you can download it uh, tomorrow because our team will upload it tonight. So you can download it tomorrow. And I'm also sharing uh, Dr. Lavan uh, Kumar Bhomik's uh, email ID in the chat box. Uh, Dr. Dr. Vignes, uh, yes. I have updated the presentation a, a bit. Uh, so uh, there is a okay. new version. I'll share that version with you. You can upload that version, not sure. the version that is with you now. Sure, sure. I don't know, I have also entered Dr. Plaban's email ID in the chat box, so you can uh, take note of it. And uh, once again, I thank uh, each of the participants. We had closer to uh, 290 participants uh, uh, on the Zoom and another 100 plus participants on the YouTube. Uh, I'm sure I think more than 400, uh, around 400 participants might have attended this webinar. So I thank uh, Dr. Blaban for uh, taking out uh, his uh, time and then uh, being with us and patiently responding to each of the questions. I once again thank uh, Dr. Blaban and uh, Balakopalji for uh, like coordinating, uh, bringing in valuable resource person from across uh, the country. Thank you, Balakopal sir, and uh, Dr. Plavin for uh, being here, and Thank also you. each one of the participants Hello. for uh, being here, uh, attending all our webinars. It, today is this the 23rd webinar, and tomorrow we have two webinars. So that will make uh, uh, 25 webinars in this last one month. Uh, tomorrow uh, morning, we are going to have a first webinar at 11 o'clock. So the webinar will be on new Indian educational policy a perspective by uh, Sri Kumanam Rajeshagaran, who was the former governor of, uh, uh, sir? Ma Isoram. Mizoram. Is so Isoram. Uh, yeah, he is going to be talking on the new Indian educational policy from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And uh, next uh, webinar, it's uh, very important for all the library professionals. Uh, it's going to be on preservation of manuscripts and books post-COVID-19. So this is going to be conducted by uh, Dr. P. Perumal, who is the chief conservator of, uh, who is the state coordinator of, uh, coordinator of Tamil Nadu Manuscripts Mission. And he was the chief conservator of the Tanjavur, uh, Tanjai Saraswati Maga Library. So he's going to be there. I have entered both the URLs uh, for registration tomorrow. Look forward to see you tomorrow on both the webinars. Thank you so much. Uh, with this, we are going to end this webinar. Thank you.